right, today we're going to explore the pencils. Okay, we've got a 6H all the way down to a 6B. Um, there's a couple things that we need to do when we're exploring new pencils or exploring pencils in general is we've got to see how they feel and we've got to see what they look like when we do this. So we've got um, the 6H, which is uh, the H pencils are the hardest lead and then the B pencils are the softest lead. So I've got a 4H and then I've got a 4B. I've got a 2B, 6B, an HB, a 2H, and I've got a 6H. Okay, so I've got seven pencils to choose from. When we're doing any kind of a drawing, um, it will require more than one kind of pencil. We need different leads for different situations. So to get comfortable with the pencils, we have to explore them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, a 6H. So um, take a 6H. My 6H is for whatever reason uh, this year, um, this the, the letter and number combination wasn't printed. Uh, it, it faded off or they didn't print it well enough. So I, I just know that all my 6H's are the ones that don't have anything on them. Um, plus a lot of times you can look at lead and see if it's um, a hard or a soft lead. I clearly see a difference in these two. Uh, this looks um, softer and this looks harder. This looks uh, thinner, this looks wider. Uh, we can get into that in a little bit. But So first thing I want you to do is take your 6H and we're going to do a value scale. So we're gonna go from dark to light. And this doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to make this perfectly inside the box. It's not that big a deal. Uh, what we wanna do is just, the first thing I want you to do is pay attention to how it feels as you're making the motions. And then pay attention to the value that it makes, uh, light or dark. I want you to pay attention to that. So we're just gonna go from light Okay. All right, we're gonna explore pencils today. The first thing I want to do is show you uh, the type of pencils that we have. These pencils don't have erasers on the end. What we'll use is we'll use something like this. This is a uh, polymer eraser. And then we also have um, available to us is we have kneaded erasers. Uh, we'll get into to those in just a second. First, I want to show you about the pencils. So the pencils, uh, they don't have an eraser for a reason. And the way they're meant to be used is you're supposed to put them in the palm of your hand. And then you wrap just three fingers. So you're putting your thumb on it, your uh, index finger, and then your middle finger. Our ring finger and our um, pinky finger are up off. In, in the air, okay, kind of like tea time, right? Um, so with this in our hand, what it does is it gets us back further on the pencil. That way we're not all the way up here gripping it really hard. So when you grip it like this and your hands down, this is the, your mode of movement or your, your range of movement, sorry. Uh, your range of movement is, is right here without sliding your hand around and you know, if, you know, those who draw, they tend to draw and they'll move their hand around. Eventually their hand will be full of graphite and their uh, graphite will be starting to move all over their, their paper. So if we draw like this, we can get our arm up off the table or desk, whatever it is, the surface that we're using. And we can use our pinky as our stabilizer. So we can set that on the surface and this will kind of stabilize uh, our hand. But look, my, my arm has so much more movement, getting it up off the table. And now I'm also not getting full of graphite. If anything, I'll have like a little graphite on the edge of my pinky. 
Um, <clears throat> and I'm drawing lighter too. So the big thing about holding this back is that I'm able to draw lighter. It's gonna make less of a, um, a, a mark if I'm holding it back further. And we always, there's no reason to draw hard. Anytime you start drawing anything, it should always be light. There's no reason to just dig right in and start grinding in on the paper. The other thing is, if, if you look at the way you hold it here, most people hold it and they get that white knuckle effect and they're gripping this thing like somebody's gonna steal it. Um, nobody's gonna come up and just take your pencil away from you during my class, okay? It's not gonna happen. Maybe outside my class that's an issue, I don't know, but um, we don't need to grip it this hard and this close. Do I expect you to do this all the time? No. Would I like you to try it every once in a while? Yes, okay? But what I want you to do, instead of this, instead of white knuckling grip, I want you to ease back, just take it back further on, on your hand, have this, make sure that it's sitting kind of in that part of your hand, um, kind of like that web of your hand, right? So we're gonna put this right here these two fingers aren't squeezing the pencil. These two fingers are actually squeezing each other and the pencil is sitting in between all that, right? So I can just pull it out easily. I'm not actually um, gripping it like this. So I, this is just kind of loose in my hand. I should be able to do, to do this, right? Uh, it's how loose my pencil should be. But as soon as I put it on paper, it falls back and this won't, it won't go any further. My hand won't allow this to drop down. So when I go to actually make a mark, I put it down. It is now on this. I'm not squeezing, because these two are just pinching each other, but they're not even white. They're just kind of hanging out. Um, nice and light. That's gonna get you a nice light line, okay? So try to remember not to squeeze, not to be down here, back it up and um, make sure that's on that part so it doesn't go anywhere. You're really just kind of locking these fingers in so it doesn't move um, up anymore, okay? All right, so that's what I want you to try. <clears throat> We've got seven different pencils to choose from, and we're gonna get into the sheet to show you, um, and so you can explore the different types of pencils because we've got um, 6B, 4B, 2B, HB, uh, 2H, 4H, and 6H. The HB pencil is your number standard number two pencil. So this HB pencil, this is a standard number two pencil, that, that the, the regular yellow pencil, okay? Um, and some of those yellow pencils have started putting the HB on there after the two, which I don't know why they're doing it, that's fine. Um, but we have seven different pencils to choose from depending on the situation, depending on what we're drawing, okay? So um, let me get back before we explore these pencils. I wanna show you the erasers again real quick. So we've got this standard, well not standard, this is a high polymer eraser. Uh, typically you'll see uh, a white one like this, but I found these and these are black and I kinda like, kinda like the way they look. Um, so I went with, with that. Okay, we've got the pink eraser, the polymer eraser, and then we've got the kneaded eraser, all right? This one's been used, uh, apparently. It's a little worn, but... So this stuff, if you ever use it, you know, it leaves that residue, right? And what happens with the residue is you wanna get rid of it, so you go wipe it, and then if you've got a drawing there, you're gonna end up taking that graphite and smearing it all over the place. So we don't, we don't wanna do that on most of our drawings, our really nice drawings. If we're just practicing or something, it's not a big deal. If we're in like the learning zone, but not the performing zone, that's not a big deal. Uh, my students do not start off with erasers because I want their mistakes to be uh, visible. I want them to know. Once they recognize, oh, I made a mistake, I want them to see it for a long time. Because if you erase the, the mistake too soon, you may forget about that mistake and make it again. So I want, um, my students' mistakes to be seen for a while. So we got the pink eraser, we got the polymer eraser, and then we've got the kneaded erasers. Kneaded because it's like dough. Um, these do not, the polymer will also leave a little bit of residue. See, there's some of that black that comes off. So that'll leave stuff too. You'll have to do this to your paper. 
<clears throat> the kneaded eraser doesn't leave anything. This is like how I explain, this is uh, like a Willy Wonka everlap everlasting gobstopper. This will never you know, go away. Um, it, it never sheds, it, it doesn't falter. Um, it does have its advantages, it has its disadvantages. It's probably the worst thing in the world for the planet if it's something that never dissolves or um, recite, uh, you know, disintegrates, then that's, that's a problem. It's a great tool for artists, um, but probably not great for the planet, so I apologize for that. Um, but this is necessary for uh, when we're doing uh, a lot of shading exercises or if you're doing a, a black and gray um, drawing, like self-portrait, this is gonna be very important so you don't go smearing your graphite all over the place on your, your image or your drawing. So what you'll end up doing with this is you'll end up folding it over on itself. So when you go to erase something, you'll erase it and you'll see the graphite stick to the eraser and then you can't really go back over that same spot because the graphite's now kind of clogged right there so you have to knead it and I'm going to show you here real quick this is one that's already been used I've been using this one for a while and kneading is like kneading dough you have to bend it shape it mold it so on and so forth it's a little slower process with this because dough is a little easier to work with than these erasers but you see how that gets nice and bright again then we hit the graphite with this and it's going to clog and then we have to knead it again and we need to keep showing that um, that highlight right that spot that gray area that's what we want to hit uh, the next graphite again so you have to keep moving this these things around the also the other nice thing about these you can get a nice fine line you pinch this you can get a super fine line um, erasing like if you wanted to do some hair or uh, a highlight around a very small area you can pinch that and get a nice little um, edge to it but the the bad thing is you can only do it once because it's going to pick up the graphite then you're going to have to move it and then pinch it again and then and then do it again so it takes some work takes some time uh, to use this for small spaces but you are able to do it it's nothing you can do with this and it's definitely nothing you can do with this you can get some nice fine lines as soon as uh, on a brand new one, but you're still gonna have to do this to it and you might end up losing that highlight you just made, okay? So that's the erasers. <clears throat> and we'll get to exploring the pencils now. So what we want to do with this is get a value scale. Value is done in layers. Or remember, we're holding it like this, back further on our, our hand, our inner hand. And value is done in layers. You don't ever just push and go, and go as hard as you can. This pencil, this 6H pencil, is never going to give you a black. Okay, you're never going to get as dark as black with a 6H. It is not meant to be, uh, to be used for that. So we're gonna go as dark as we can with layers. It's a little bit of pressure, but I'm not like digging into it. And then we're gonna ease up on our pressure, ease up, and we just wanna do a value, quick value scale. And you, you have to feel this, feel how it feels when it's touching the paper. What does it feel like in your hand as you're moving it on paper? This is really light. And I also want you to rotate your pencil in your hand as you use it, because if you don't, you just created another sharp edge on the other side. So as soon as you accidentally rotate it or you rotate it for the first time, you'll get a dark line uh, or a darker line than what you were doing, and it might mess up what you're, what you're trying to achieve. So every once in a while, just rotate it in your hand and um, keep moving, because you want kind of a dull edge. You don't want super sharp. And these six H's, speaking of sharp, if you go too hard on a piece of paper with this, it'll make an indent into your paper. Uh, unlike some pencils, like the soft pencils, won't necessarily do that. But you, you might not even have to push real hard. But if you look how sharp this is, this is going to possibly, if I use it wrong, it's going to make an indent which won't erase. 
And then if you go to put value over that area, that indent is always going to be um, visible. So I'm going and building my values. I went back and then I'm going to slowly get lighter and lighter and lighter until it becomes nothing. Okay. And then build it back up and just go back and forth. And you can see that that's about it. I mean, there's not much to this. This is a, a 6H, okay? Now I want you to go from the extreme, okay? I want you to go from one extreme to the other. This is 6H. I want you to jump down to 6B. Grab your 6B. And I want you to do the same thing. <clears throat> and I want you to, again, feel first, then look. So you're gonna feel Holy cow, that feels so different. This is definitely a soft lead. And then if you look at it, how light is this? How dark is this? That's two very um, different values that you're getting. And I'm building layers. Again, the big thing with, the, with pencils as well is don't, you don't have to push hard. It's all about layers. Uh, what happens if you take a pencil, especially a, a B pencil, and you start pushing real hard, it just becomes shiny. And when it becomes shiny, that's not necessarily going to give you the value that you want. Um, if you're doing your self-portrait and you've got a lot of dark hair or black hair, and you're starting to fill in your hair, you might end up with super gray hair, and you might turn yourself into somebody that looks really old because you just got lazy and went really hard and really fast, and now you've got all these lines in your hair and it's it's super shiny and that's not gonna work real well. Now, as you notice here, it's taken me a lot longer to get lighter with this. It's harder to get lighter with a B pencil, especially the higher up on the Bs that you go. Cause 6B isn't where they stop. They go up eight, 10. Like there's different uh, levels of B. Plus there's odd number uh, B's and H's as well. We use uh, even here because there's not much of a difference between two and three or four and five. So I just use in my class, I use the uh, even numbers. So there's my 6H, 6B. And now I want you to go to HB. And I want you to see how the HB feels. This again, this is your uh, standard number two pencil. I'm actually going to break my lead a little bit because this is this is brand new, super sharp. I'm just going to kind of snap the tip of it off and then round off the edge so that way um, I don't have too sharp of a point. I don't want too sharp of a point. Okay. Um, and right now I just created an edge to it. So what I what I might want to do, which I will do off camera here, I'm going to just kind of rub this on paper and round it out a little bit so that way it's not really sharp. I'm just uh, rubbing it off a little bit just to grind down the sharp edges because right now it's going to make some almost 6H type lines if I'm not careful. And make sure you rotate it back and forth. You're looking for that round edge, not a sharp edge. Okay, so I got it, I got it down about where I want it. So now I'm going to do my same value scale and I'm going to pay attention to my variation in value and how it feels. So right away, I notice that it feels like a number two pencil. Like this is that standard pencil that I've been using for years. And if you notice, you're not going to get as dark, but you're darker than that, right? So you've got that three step um, value change in the pencils. So if you wanted to do a self portrait, you don't want to do all your self portrait with an HB. You don't even want to do it all with a 6B and definitely not an H, uh, 6H. So you need to have this whole gamut of um, pencils so that way you can make the right choice in the right, um, in the right spots of which value belongs where on your face, right? Or in your hair. And these are just a quick value scale. Nothing that should take too long. I just want you to get a feel for it. Try and build your layers up. Again, don't push really hard. Just build your layers up. And then ease off, ease off, ease off. And we want that to fade out. 
and this is getting a little hard to fade out and I think it's there's still it's still a little sharp and we're not even talking about blending stubs right now as we're not even we're not even going to touch blending stubs right now and we'll get into blending stubs later okay so I got three value scales three different pencils so now take I don't care which way you go you go through and fill out the two the H uh, the two H four H two B four B uh, fill those out. Don't do this yet. Um, get this done first. <clears throat> this one's still nice and soft. Definitely not as dark as the 6B, uh, but it's close. This one should fade a little easier near the end, near the light area. I could get a little further with the light value with this one, but still a little difficult since it's a, a B. I'm gonna jump up to the 2H. Again, you gotta watch these points. I'm not gonna bother breaking all the tips off right now, but you know, you gotta watch the, those tips. Already this is darker than this one, but it's still, I can feel how hard the lead is and I can, it almost feels like I'm scratching the surface, like literally scratching the paper. It's, it's sharp, it's, it's not soft at all. Uh, and you'll notice that your B pencils, because they're so soft, you'll sharpen those more than anything. And these H pencils, well, you'll hardly ever have to sharpen an H pencil. Now for drawing, if you need to make an outline of something, if you need to start uh, by making light lines on your paper, you you can't, you don't always wanna just choose the 6H because it's the lightest one. Um, Cause you can see, you can still get pretty light with a 2H, you can get pretty light with an HB as well. Uh, HB is gonna erase easier than any of the H's uh, as well. So. You don't always want to use a 6H if you need to make a light outline. Again, if it's the sharpest one, you've got to be really careful. <clears throat> to be or not to be. Again, nice and soft, but this one is a smidge lighter than the six and the four. And again, I want to build layers. I'm holding a pencil back. I'm not adding a lot of pressure. Like there is a level of pressure I keep going back to, but I'm not digging in the paper. Anytime you're adding value to something, it should take time. You shouldn't be rushing through when you're adding value. See, again, it's kind of hard to fade off, but I did it, it's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna jump into the 4H. Not to be mistaken with the 4-H club. All right, this is the 4-H. Definitely a difference. Holy cow, from going from even the 2-B to a 4-H, boy, it's different. I really feel like I'm scratching. And I can see the difference, it's lighter, getting a little darker, getting a little darker, so on and so forth. I should see a change in value from that 6H all the way up to the 6B. And it's easier to fade out, except for how small the lines end up being. Because a lot of times you might see a gap of nothing and then you'll see one of your little lines that you made. But otherwise, it's definitely easier than a B pencil. Okay, so I see it. Hopefully you see it um, at home or, or in the class. Okay, so this bottom part, this thing, 
<clears throat> I have specific pencils I want you to use for the special areas. If you're at home and you didn't have this thing, you can easily make this up on a sheet of paper. Get a blank sheet of paper and um, just draw a little, draw seven little boxes. This is just a standard kind of a cube uh, or box shape showing some dimension. And you want to use the specific pencil that I'm asking you to use to see what, um, why you would use the pencil in that particular area, okay? Um, this is my 6H, I'm not gonna use that right now. My 4H. So, what I want you to think about is where your light source is. Anytime you're looking, at, anytime you draw something, let's just say you're going off of memory, which is not something that I recommend doing all the time. You wanna make sure you have a reference image, but if you are making something up and say you're drawing something for a woodworking class or uh, drafting class or something where you have to show a light source because you have to show dimension, right? So a light source, you always have to choose wh where you, where's your light coming from, okay? I'm right-handed, I think that's why I lean towards the right, so I end up having my light source over here. So this is where my light would be coming from. So that's how I decided what pencils I wanted you to put where. So if I'm using the 4H pencil, I want the 4H, is this going to be dark or light? Right, so if my light source is here, which is which is darker, the 4H or the 2H? And then which is gonna give me that lighter value? I don't want you to choose, or I don't want you to push hard. I want you just to lay down some value, make sure your hand holding your pencil back further, lay down some value. That's pretty light, right? You might not even be able to see that really well on the, on the camera. So now I'm going from the 4H, which typically, and maybe my light source would be a little more up in this area, shining down, but this would be the side. This would be the top. If my sun or my light is above, that's gonna be the lightest area. And then the next area, and I just, I don't want you doing a gradient flow on these, a gradient value change. I just want you to fill it in solid, just so you can see the difference in what the value can be, okay, or should be. And again, I'm just building layers. I'm not pushing any harder, it's the same pressure. I don't wanna get too sloppy, but this is gonna get covered up by the 4B anyways. Um, and then if you wanna fill in more, cause the H pencils are hard to fill in. So what you do is just go sideways and go the opposite direction, make perpendicular lines and fill in that empty space. That's gonna help give you that extra value. Uh, that we're looking for, because this 2H should be darker than the 4H. It should be slightly darker on the outside of this, on the side of the box, than on the top of the box. All right. So I'm just gonna kind of hit this like this. If I need to uh, go at an angle, do a diagonal, I could go at a diagonal. Again, I'm not changing my pressure. I'm trying to keep the same pressure, top to bottom. And you can see that there's a little bit of difference now. So that's lighter on top than on the side. All right, I'm gonna jump into, I'm gonna do the HB. Okay, HB is gonna be on the bottom because technically since this is, I see this is like an open door, this is, there's light that's able to get inside that's being reflected off of other things, other objects, regardless, this is going to, the floor of this box is gonna have a little more uh, light shining in than the wall would get. Now, technically we would wanna shade this darker back here and then have it fade out to light because deeper in a box, um, it would be darker, but we're gonna consider this an open box on both ends. So we get this uh, value going through the same way. Now this is my HB, I'm just filling this in solid. And if you notice, it looks a lot like the 2H. So I'm gonna build my layers up just a little bit. And it should be a little light, but 2H is right next to the HB as well in the in the value scale or in the, the pencils, right? So I don't wanna to go too dark or try to go too dark. 
I think that's right. I think that's pretty good. That's a little darker than that. Then I'm gonna grab the 4B and I'm gonna fill in uh, this side. And you can turn your paper or whatnot. I'm, not try I'm trying not to turn my paper so that way I keep my cam camera angle the same way. So again, don't go straight dark right off the bat. We're not trying to make this thing black, right? We're just trying to add some value. And it should be slightly darker, or it should be darker than our HB. It should be the darkest value on here, considering it's the softest lead that we used. And it should also see less sun than any of the other areas. Again, I'm not trying to push too hard. I'm just trying to fill all the negative space, all the empty space. Make sure I get a solid fill. And that's definitely darker than any of the other values. Okay, so that's the exploration of our, our pencils. So we've tested things out. We see what they can do. We see how they feel, or we feel how they feel. Um, and the next thing we go from here is we do the value exercises where we do some shading with a specific pencil. Um, and this is just a preview of what we will be doing in another video. Um, this is the value exercise shading. Uh, we've got a value scale, a 10, 10 box value scale. We'll do that individually and then we'll do this gradiently and then we'll do this individually as well, just like this. We'll do a sphere gradient. Um, individual and then we will make this flat circle look like a sphere as well by using a gradient value change okay so step by step gradient step by step gradient and my students will use a 2b pencil on this um, we could do it with each one of the pencils but if we use if we did just the 6h it wouldn't work very well for this we wouldn't get anywhere near this this value, we wouldn't be able to change eight times with just a 6H. Um, we can get close to that with a 2B. Technically, we'd wanna use a different pencil for like every other line, like these two would be 6H, these two would be 4H or, or you know, 2H and so on and so forth. But, so we're gonna use just a 2B on this uh, and see what it can do before we get into our first project. So, just a preview. Thank you for watching.